Francesco, in uh, two minutes we start. I'm calling him, but... Uh... Uh, he's not respond. I mean, he he cut off the call, meaning maybe he's trying to connect right now. Okay. I can start because he can arrive. Now. So, Francesca, are we on? Okay. You too? Yes, yes, you can start. So good afternoon to this uh, second session devoted to uh, the struggle in uh, Bogozici, uh, unexpected challenge to authoritarianism. Uh, we had already a first part of this uh, roundtable, uh, which was uh, interrupted by a troll's attack, which gave us the possibility actually uh, to have a double event uh, and to have more time also for a discussion that uh, had uh, started very well and it was going to be very interesting. So I will just say a few words to introduce uh, this uh, second part. Uh, we had three main interests in discussing this uh, topic. One is related to Turkey and uh, the uh, challenge to develop an innovative type of struggles facing at the same time an authoritarian regimes and the pandemic situation. Uh, and the uh, uh, main question is uh, uh, about the uh, strategies that made this uh, encounter successful, these struggles successful at least in the sense of mobilizing uh, uh, a lot of people uh, and expanding uh, the range of attention also uh, beyond the university itself, making it a sort of uh, symbols of the resistance uh, to uh, authoritarian move. Second uh, issue uh, uh, is about struggles for, for academic freedom. Uh, and uh, uh, with the Scholars at Risk Network in Italy, uh, we have been cooperating in the organizations of this event. Uh, but uh, we want to add that uh, the issues of struggles for academic freedom is not just relevant in authoritarian regimes, but we have many examples in Europe starting from France in recent day, the UK and so on, in which we see uh, this uh, freedom attacked and repression on uh, freedom of academics. So this is also special issues we want to address. And then uh, third, we want to address the issues of movements in times of crisis. So how uh, in a moment of uh, pandemics crisis, but also of crisis and challenges uh, uh, for uh, the uh, political regime, how could uh, struggles develop challenging uh, the expected uh, the uh, theoretical expectations by social movements uh, theories. <coughs> so uh, the round table, uh, of course, uh, is happening while uh, the events are unfolding, so not yet the time in which we have uh, a lot of empirical research, but it is a time in which we can uh, um, try to understand better what's going on uh, with uh, uh, guests that are at the same time experts in uh, uh, the issues of uh, social movements and uh, participating actively uh, in the events. And we have uh, uh, with us <coughs> Mer, uh, Mert uh, Aslanla, who is Associated Professor at the Department of Political Science and International Relations at Bogerzici. <coughs> Sorry, we have uh, uh, also 
Zeynep Gambetti, who is an independent scholar and was associate professor of political theory at Bogazici. And we will have uh, Oljan uh, Yedi Veren, who is a graduate, graduate student at Bogazici University and active uh, in the area of uh, uh, sexual health, LGBTQ rights, citizenship, and poverty. So in the first part, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, addressed the issues of uh, how these uh, events uh, developed, uh, uh, starting in uh, January. Uh, we had analyzed the timeline of the events, the innovations in, in terms of the forms of actions and uh, organizations, the capacity of the event to develop solidarity within the community of the university, the context specific to an authoritarian regime, the ways in which uh, uh, this struggle became also a symbol of resistance uh, to attempt by uh, the uh, regime to take away, to uh, occupy, let's say, uh, hostile takeover uh, of the universities, how this is also connected with the uh, a history of uh, uh, struggles that uh, in recent time in Turkey have included uh, the struggles around uh, Gezi, uh, the uh, repressions of the letters, the petitions of the academics for uh, peace, uh, citizenship rights on uh, LGBTQ uh, issues, uh, struggle against the attempt to reduce freedoms. And uh, what we want to discuss now uh, is uh, the perspective of these uh, struggles. So what are the lessons that are learned from the past, uh, in the, from the past histories, from the mem memory of Gezi, uh, but also from uh, uh, other uh, uh, episodes of struggles all over the world. So uh, 2019 was uh, a moment of uh, um, extreme uh, development of uh, social struggles all over the world, and to a certain extent uh, also the struggles nowadays can be related to uh, this. How are alliances created? How do uh, communities or subjectivities uh, emerge? And uh, how, uh, which are the perspectives uh, for uh, the development uh, of progressive social movements uh, in uh, Turkey and uh, uh, more in general? So uh, I would like uh, to ask, first of all, uh, Mert, to address these uh, uh, questions, uh, and then uh, Oljan and then uh, Zainab, and then we open the floor. I'd say something about the format. Uh, we open the floor uh, to the public who is following the event uh, in YouTube, and uh, uh, they can ask questions in the chat, uh, and uh, I will report the, the questions to uh, the participant to the round table. But we also have with us uh, uh, the organizers uh, of this uh, round table, but one Ren uh, Rosa Burk uh, and Delal the the Aydin is going to join us. And so they, they may also uh, intervene during the discussion. So I wish to thank all of you and I give the floor to Matt. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you so much for organizing this second part uh, of the talks. It's, it's a pleasure to be back here and doing this in a, in a troll-free format. Uh, hopefully, everything will go fine uh, in this in the second episode. Uh, I want to thank Donatella de la Porta uh, and the entire Cosmos team for for organizing uh, these even events and giving us the floor uh, to reach out to a larger audience about our, our predicament. So um, what I want to do is I I want to do a brief recap of uh, a few things that I said in the in the first part and then then uh, then expand on some of the 
uh, questions that 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 Professor Delaporta uh, raised. I don't think I will be able to address all of them, but I'll try to provide some reflections on at least uh, some of those uh, questions. So uh, I'm not going to go over the entire trajectory of the the protest events that we've been organizing since. Uh, the first week of uh, January, and as I when I said we, you know, uh, I mean both the faculty members, the students, uh, as well as the the alumni, uh, in different occasions, sometimes in coordination, but many times uh, on their own, they've been you know protesting the the the, the, the rectoral appointment decision of of, of the president uh, since early January, in spite of police oppression. Uh, ongoing smear campaign on the media, arrests and 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 and, and prosecutions. Um, so, and I want to underline, you know, why we began uh, these protests. Uh, this, this was the first time that Boazici experienced a top-down, uh, unconsulted political appointment of someone outside the university faculty as the rector since the 1980 military uh, regime. Um, and therefore, the decision was perceived by the faculty and the students as a, as a great threat to the institutional existence of Boazici, uh, as we know it. And you know, this was uh, th this perception was very much grounded on what we've been observing throughout the university system, uh, the public university system in in Turkey over the last uh, over the last uh, decade. We've seen numerous examples of how the politically appointed rectors eliminated academic freedoms purged our fellow colleagues uh, as part of the, 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 the petition, uh, the, the peace petition, but also in, in, through other occasions, packed the departments with loyalist academic cadres, obliterated any, any, any resemblance of ca campus pluralism and, 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 and freedom. And among this uh, overall authoritarian crackdown on, on the university system, Boazici was one of the few remaining uh, relatively autonomous uh, spaces until until recently. Therefore, the appointment decision was pursued by us uh, and the students as a as a, uh, a as an imminent loss of the entire life world that that our academic existence uh, build upon. So. Above and beyond every other objective, the protest has been a peaceful uh, resistance to defend this institution. But we have repeatedly argued in public that our demands did not only or exclusively concern uh, Boazici, but instead we, from the very beginning, demanded um, uh, a, a, a legal reform uh, to democratize the university governance uh, system in the entire country and to restore back academic freedoms uh, high quality teaching and education, uh, as well as uh, a plural and free uh, democratic campus, uh, campus life. And I think this was one of the reasons why it resonated with the larger public, and particularly with, with students and faculty members from, uh, from other universities. And this was probably also what was unique in the sense that not that you know, faculty members from other universities did not resist in the past, they certainly did, but this kind of unified voice on the part of faculty and students is something that is uh, that is rather unprecedented in the in the in the at least in the in the uh, in the recent years. Boazici obviously, as an institution, has a high symbolic capital in, in the public. So the fact that a good, you know, higher education is now under threat, even in Boazici, also I think had a had a had a large resonance with with the public, and it's something I think also you know cut across the 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 the, uh, the, the social and political divisions that 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 uh, that define uh, the, the current current landscape. So we were able to appeal to a larger public because this was a public good that is I think valued by people from very different walks of uh, walks of life, but. Let me further politicize my analysis and argue that uh, the nature of this authoritarian encroachment and perhaps you know, more blatantly like the, this conquest in a way, attempt for conquest, uh, embodies and epitomizes many of the problems of the current uh, political regime. Uh, most importantly, it's two interrelated pillars. The first one is the extreme autocratic uh, centralization. Uh, of all decision-making power, and along with that, you know, complete disrespect for any politically autonomous uh, spaces. But also, consequently, or as a as a necessary consequence of this, uh, uh, 
political loyalty is becoming the prime standard for, for all you know, appointment uh, uh, decisions. And the public, I think, the larger public, is concerned with the, you know, uh, with the apparent uh, you know, undemocratic nature of this, of this regime, that's for sure. Uh, and they are reacting to this as well uh, within the scope of these protests. But it also has to do, it, it, I think it also resonates with this increasing concern that, that, that this kind of system, this, this kind of institutional or let me say you know, anti-institutional framework uh, also affects public service delivery and, 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 and good governance. So in, in different aspects of public good uh, delivery, this kind of system is actually undermining uh, good governance. And I think this also has, this has been, uh, this has a resonance with the, with the larger public. So now seeing this, ha this happening also in one of the, you know, last remaining good public education uh, institutions, has also, I think, uh, led to the mobilization of larger public, uh, public, uh, public uh, support. As I said in the first part of the talk, um, I think uh, the other reason why we we've seen uh, the larger resonance of this of these protests has to do with the, the kind of affinities that people actually see between these between our protests and what has been happening to 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 uh, to other social, cultural, uh, uh, and, 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 and physical commons uh, around, the, around the country. Uh, so one of the things that the government has been doing, I think from the very beginning, is kind of destroying the boundaries that, that protect these commons and appropriating these spaces, whether they are physical, institutional, or cultural spaces, and, and dispossessing their current users and, and producers uh, while basically accumulating some sort of either economic capital, as in the case of physical commons, or symbolic capital, uh, as in the case of uh, certain uh, cultural uh, cultural uh, spaces, and and while doing that, while you know, as you dispossess people from these commons, you also kind of undermine their capacity to reproduce themselves socially. Uh, reproduce themselves. So, so what we've been, you know, trying to do this our defense of this specific educational common, this public good, this public university. Uh, I think resonates with other people who are trying to defend their own commons, whether they are, these are, as I said, uh, physical spaces or, or or cultural symbolic spaces or both, uh, as in the case of, for instance, urban spaces. Um, so. So these are some of my points about you know why I think these these protests uh, resonated with the, with the, with the, with, the, with the larger public. So where do these protests stand in the larger protest universe? And perhaps you know the, you know how how does it connect to, to other movements, other struggles? Um, let me say a few things about this, and I think you know we obviously need much more data and much more reflection, time to to, to reflect. Uh, to, to, to develop uh, more comprehensive analysis. But, you know, three points that I want to make is that, you know, the, the first one is that there is not this hiatus between the, the, the Gezi protests and the Boazici protests. Uh, despite the increasing repression of the protest arena and, you know, all the other, uh, other freedoms, uh, protest activity has been going on in Turkey. Uh, so, despite the increasing authoritarian, autocratic nature of the of the regime, uh, people have been actually active, and this is something that you know I see, for instance, in a, in a, in a data set that I've been uh, a protest event data set that I've been working with my colleague uh, Denis Arkman. Uh, what we see is, you know, protest has not ceased. Protest has become perhaps more individualized and atomized. It has become harder and harder to gather larger crowds. Uh, due to especially uh, widespread use of uh, protest bans. But nevertheless, we see protest activity. Like in, back in 2020, under the pandemic, for instance, we've seen protest episodes by uh, the bar associations uh, fighting against a new bar association law. Uh, we've seen uh, HDP uh, members of the parliament and, 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 and the members of the parliament 
uh, the party defending, uh, like fighting against the dism dismissal of the MPs from the from the parliament. We see protests against the war in in Syria, and of course we've seen actually very large protests by women, and and perhaps among all the different. Uh, Protester groups, women uh, had been the ones that have been organizing the largest, uh, like gathering the largest uh, crowds, uh, as they did, you know, uh, only a week ago. Um, uh, what is common to all these protests is that they are often protests to resist ongoing encroachments into their into their uh, domain. So, so they basically try to react and resist ongoing authoritarian. Uh, acts of the government, rather than being proactive, you know, protests demanding greater freedoms or, or democratization. So they are often protests to preserve something uh, in the first place than to demand something. Obviously, as protests continue, they often turn into or, or they articulate demands for uh, greater democratization. But what, it, what often triggers them is, is some sort of an authoritarian intervention on the part of the uh, of the government, and this has also been the case with with the, with the, with the Boazici protests. So, in that case, in that sense, I think the Boazici protests have been embedded in this in this context of enduring resilience of Turkish, uh, uh, like civil society in in, in in Turkey against authoritarian uh, encroachments. Uh, as for Continuities, lessons, and some sort of connections with Gezi and and these protests and and, and the Boazici protests. I think you know we see minimal organizational uh, connections. Uh, I may be wrong, uh, but this is what I see. I think in the case of the Boazici protests as well, I don't think there were like these strong connections, organizational connections to 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 other uh, movements. Uh, obviously, student movement or you know, what is left of it, or different student groups joined and expanded the protest to other cities or other parts of uh, Istanbul. And certain civil society organizations uh, provided you know, support uh, when there were these large protests you know, in front or when there were plans for large protests in front of the uh, university or uh, when there were protests in, in places like Kadıköy. But aside from that, I think the protests have been primarily driven by, you know, the, the, the students and faculty members of and, and the alumni of the uh, Boazici University. So I don't think we see connections in terms of organizations and, 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 and networks. But again, uh, I say that with a, you know, with, a, with a grain of salt. So take it for, with, with a grain of salt. Um, what we see is, I think, continuities in the repertoires of, 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 of protesting, especially... Significant continuities between uh, the, the repertoire of protesting in the Gizi and perhaps in subsequent protests in, since then, but also certain uh, similarities with you know protests elsewhere, as you pointed out uh, uh, in your introduction. Protests that have taken place in uh, in 2019, and what we see is kind of a more carnivalesque, uh, more festive, artistic way of protesting. Uh, especially in the protests that students have uh, carried out, particularly in the campus. And what is, I think, common to these is that, and I think this was an like, important part of the, the Gezi protests uh, as well, is that this visible manifestation of diverse uh, identities uh, and a certain performance of pluralism and diversity in the action of, of, of protesting. So rather than trying to present an image of a, uh, homogeneity or uniformity organized behind a single uh, message, the protest act symbolically reveals the diversity of the, 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 the body politic itself. Uh, so it doesn't shy away from that. It, it in fact, deliberately presents that, uh, performs that, uh, that diversity that constitutes the, the, uh, the, 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 the community. And I think there are significant continuities between Gezi and, and Boazici uh, in that sense. This obviously generates tensions within the community, uh, but also part of sustaining mobilization 
and expanding it, uh, like the, the, the organizational task, the political task, is also to how to negotiate those those tensions. And I think that has also been experienced by the the, the uh, community. And and so far, I think uh, it's, it has been quite successful in maintaining unity while uh, demonstrating that 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 uh, diversity. Uh, as I said, like humor and artistic expression is an important part of this this repertoire, and I think it's quite important. And this was also the case back in the Gezi, uh, in deflecting the the criminalizing discourse of the government by showing to the public that the you know the the protesters are not what the the government uh, depicts them to be. Right, so so I think this humor and artistic expression is quite important and successful in deflecting and undermining the the, the stigmatizing and the criminalizing discourse of the uh, government. And in this, uh, another obvious uh, continuity between Gezi, uh, but also other protests elsewhere, is you know this very creative use of the social media. And I think here there has been, in fact, a leap. Uh, in the in the in the quality and the, and the, and success of uh, producing uh, social media content on the part of the protest, especially the the, the obviously the students. So one of the things that happened in the Gezi was that uh, when the when the mainstream media uh, chose to show you know penguin as we commonly say documentaries instead of showing the protests. Uh, protesters actually engaged in producing their own content and there were some attempts to, to create actually uh, media organizations afterwards. Uh, perhaps one of the most successful ones later on was Mediascope. Uh, but what we see during the Boazici protest is almost, you know, it kind of moved beyond this and, and, and students themselves almost created their own media channels and have been successfully communicating uh, with the public and there is again diversity in this in this content production as well there are multiple now collectives student collectives producing content uh, to, 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 to directly communicate uh, with the uh, with the public and I see those collective those autonomous collectives producing their own message as a, as a very valuable uh, important and probably long-lasting output of this of this of this uh, protest uh, uh, episode. So, uh, so in that sense, a both in terms of organization, in terms of generating solidarity networks, in terms of, for instance, creating new committees and commissions uh, among the among the faculty members, but also in terms of creating uh, new, you know, media collectives and uh, organizational. Uh, uh, Frameworks, uh, the, the the protests themselves have generated, in a way, uh, new uh, new new comments, uh, so to, so to say. So, so this is also a moment of a process of becoming a community once again. Not that it wasn't there, but I think uh, expanding it, further strengthening it, and reflecting on what it means to be uh, a community, reflecting on its uh, values and and. And perhaps in the process, redefining them and and, 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 and and strengthening them. So let me stop here, and you know I'm happy to address you know questions that can address uh, some of the other points that you mentioned in your introduction. Thank you very much, Ber uh, Mert. And uh, you were talking about continuity of protest, the role of women, environmental struggles, struggles. Uh, uh, against uh, uh, repression and so on, and uh, of uh, the um, diversity, the use of um, uh, humor. Uh, the, uh, I noticed in the previous uh, uh, part of the round table when you showed pictures that the rainbow flag was mm -hmm. very much present. It's also in the pictures that we have chosen to present this uh, uh, event. And the uh, LGBTQ plus movement was very central uh, uh, in Gezi, was an important part of this uh, diversity. Uh, and when we were interrupted last time, probably not by chance, uh, it was while uh, uh, Ojan was uh, 
uh, going to tell us about uh, the uh, role and the importance of this uh, uh, type of um, uh, uh, protest uh, for gender rights. And I want to give him the floor now to uh, go back to this uh, important uh, uh, part of the story. Mm. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah. First, I want to um, give a historical uh, background and uh, what, what was going on before uh, Boğaziçi protests uh, in Turkey. Um, in, uh, in the eyes of LGBT plus people. Um, uh, after that, uh, I want to uh, come to uh, Boğaziçi protest and uh, the position of LGBT plus people. And lastly, uh, I want to uh, emphasize uh, the similarities and differences uh, between uh, other protests uh, of Boğaziçi protest. Um, yeah, when AKP uh, came to power in 2002, uh, they had a conservative uh, democrat identity, uh, as we all know. Uh, they promised uh, economic growth and uh, democratization. Um, so they implemented neoliberal policies to uh, fuel economic growth and made uh, reforms uh, in areas such as healthcare, education, uh, law, social policy, etc. But over the years, um, and conservative democratic, de democratic identity has some limitations uh, to uh, achieve uh, these uh, ends. Uh, and over the years, uh, these limitations uh, revealed, uh, especially uh, in 2008 uh, with the economic crisis, uh, we, we saw that neoliberal policies um, it provides uh, economic growth, but uh, not welfare uh, for all the segments of the society. Uh, on the other hand, uh, at the beginning of 2010s, uh, the Kurdish in initiative uh, was failed. Uh, also, uh, yani with this example, we uh, saw that uh, the promise of AKP, uh, the promise of democratization, uh, was failed. Um, and um, among the opposition, uh, some objections uh, to AKP government uh, started to raise. Um, and Gezi Park protest in 2013 was uh, the most concrete uh, uh, example uh, of uh, these uh, objections. Um, after Gezi protests, uh, two, two years later after, uh, after Gezi protests, uh, AKP uh, banned uh, all pride parades uh, over country. Uh, so, um, yeah, th this was uh, the first example uh, that uh, the AKP government uh are now uh, was now uh, against lgbt plus people uh, uh, against the exist of existence of lgbt plus people in uh, public sphere uh, but they didn't uh, target only lgbt plus people they target uh, all opposition uh, they started to follow a uh, antagonistic politics uh, they replaced their um conservative democrat identity with uh, indigenous and uh, national identity. Uh, they start to suffer um, uh, a legitima legitimization crisis uh, with the uh, increase uh, uh, objections uh, among uh, opposition. So they um, tried to consolidate its legitimacy uh, by criminalizing all segments of society uh, that they saw as opposed to the government. Um, and as far as I can see, uh, the AKP uh, has used uh, its anti-LGBTI plus policies uh, to serve uh, three purposes. Um, 
first, uh, the government uh, began to, uh, you know, circulate cer certain discourses on sexuality through LGBTI plus hostility uh, and tried to shape sexuality uh, accordingly to its own objectives. Uh, AKP follows a pronatalist policy. And, it's, and the, these pronotalist policies aims at economic growth, uh, also tries to strengthen the influence uh, of the family institution in accordance uh, with uh, their own political interests. Uh, they encouraged uh, much traditional and patriarchal forms of uh, family uh, in parallel with uh, pronatalist uh, policies. Uh, for example, on the days uh, when the Boğaziçi protests were on the agent, uh, agenda of the country uh, and uh, every day another uh, state official uh, targeted LGBTI plus people, uh, Erdogan made the following statement. Mother is the pillar of the family. Let's not get stuck with what these lesbians say. Let's look at our mothers. Uh, it's... Uh, shows that uh, and AKP positions uh, LGBTI people um, you know, uh, as something opposed to family. Uh, they uh, used LGBTI plus hostility uh, to circulate uh, discourses promoting heterosexual patriarchal family. Uh, also, uh, they... Uh, Positioned all sexualities uh, that uh, were not made for reproductive purposes as abnormal. Uh, secondly, they uh, increase uh, their control over public sphere by presenting LGBTI plus people as a national security threat. Uh, in addition to the fact that pride marches are uh, prohibited uh, in all cities today. Uh, in 2017, Ankara governorship uh, banned all LGBTI plus themed events for an indefinite period of time in Ankara. Uh, the reason for the ban was uh, cited as the possibility that these events would disrupt public health and morality and also uh, provoke uh, the sensitiv sensitivities of different social groups and consequently these groups could attack LGBTI plus people. Uh, this ban was not limited to LGBTI plus uh, people, actually. Uh, police, uh, for example, police did not allow uh, rainbow flags uh, to be taken uh, to the neighborhood meeting uh, and the feminist night parade. Uh, and the, the, the demonstrators were uh, subjected to police violence on this excuse. Uh, there are also... Uh, e examples uh, of it uh, during... Uh, Boğaziçi protest. Uh, I want to um, summarize uh, this process um, shortly. Um, after uh, the appointment of Melit Bulu, uh, a, a vigil began uh, on the campus uh, with the participation of many academicians and students. Uh, under the scope of this vigil, um, the academicians turned their backs uh, to the directorate building uh, with their robes, uh, and the students uh, organized various act activities uh, on the campus in order to reflect their protests uh, every weekday when the campus was open. Uh, one, of, one of the activities uh, held within the scope of the vigil was the uh, exhibition organized by uh, Boaz University students. Uh, <coughs> there was also a work uh, with a Shahmeran figure and LGBTI plus flex. Uh, on the image of Kaaba uh, in the exhibition. On January uh, 29, uh, with the allegation that this work was attacking Islamic values, a lynching campaign was uh, launched uh, with the participation of the Minister of Religious Affairs, Ali Arbaş, and the Islamic Studies Club uh, of Boğaziçi University. And uh, other uh, officials. Uh, according to statements uh, made by the governorship uh, of Istanbul, um, <coughs> sorry, according to statements uh, made by the governorship of Istanbul on uh, January uh, 30, uh, police raided uh, the club room uh, shared by Boğaziçi University LGBTI plus uh, studies club and um, Boğaziçi University Women's uh, Studies club. 
Uh, they, uh, the press release also states that four Boğaziçi University students uh, associated with the exhibition uh, were detained uh, by police. Um, uh, in, uh, in this uh, police raid, uh, they uh, claim that uh, they find uh, rainbow flags uh, banners uh, and a book uh, allegedly uh, making uh, propaganda uh, for a terrorist organization. Um, and also uh, they use the phrase captured uh, in the press statements. So they presented rainbow flags or banners uh, uh, such as, uh, you know, crime elements. Uh, it, 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 it was part uh, of uh, their attempts uh, to criminalize LG LGBTI plus uh, people. Uh, also, uh, the government, uh, the governorship uh, tried to present the rainbow. Uh, 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 yeah, they used the abbreviation uh, of LGBT uh, uh, space uh, I. Uh, they um, write uh, I. Uh, uh, away from LGBT uh, because they tried to uh, present uh, LGBTI plus people uh, s uh, as a, a terrorist organization. Uh, also, uh, in, uh, Minister of Internal Affairs uh, Süleyman Soylu uh, stated that uh, four LGBT perverts were uh, detained uh, who committed disrespect to, uh, to the Kabe Muazzama at Boğaziçi University. Um, he uh, targeted LGBTI plus people, although the uh, detainees are not related to Boğaziçi University LGBTI plus studies club, uh, and uh, their uh, sexual identity was unknown. Uh, on February 1, uh, a protest was organized uh, on a call uh, from uh, Boğaziçi University students uh, as a response to the raid. Uh, however, uh, due to uh, police uh, blockade, the protests could not uh, reach the, uh, the point of call. Uh, many students who came from other universities uh, to support the protests uh, were detained uh, far from the um, protest point. Uh, police did not let Boğaziçi uh, University students uh, who were uh, on the campus before, before the time for the protest to leave the campus and prevent them uh, together uh, with other protesters. After that, the students decided to uh, continue their protests um, in the campus. Uh, they aimed to uh, have a conversation with the trustee uh, to voice their demands, such as the release of students who were detained uh, and the resignation, uh, resignation of the trustee. However, the trustee did not com communicate uh, with uh, the students and uh, let the police uh, inside the campus. Uh, students inside the campus uh, were uh, dispersed by a police attack uh, with a very high dose of violence. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it was learned that a total of uh, 159 students were detained. Statement on the Subject: The governorship of Istanbul made a claim that the protest carried out on the campus was intended to be violent, uh, and underlined that there were LGBTI plus among protesters. However, uh, there wasn't any explanation how the governorship learned the sexual identity of protesters uh, who were detained. On the night of the protest, it was learned that. The LGBTI plus studies club was uh, closed uh, in this statement made by uh, Fahrettin Altun, uh, head of communication. Uh, he uh, made this statement on Twitter. Uh, so we learned our, um, you know, the closure of our uh, student club uh, from social media and not from uh, the trust team. Uh, in this statement made, uh, it was claimed that the exhibition, uh, which was the subject of the Lynch campaign, was held by the LGBTI uh, plus studies club. Uh, however, the exhibition uh, was organized on the initiative of Boaz University students who participated in protests. Um, moreover, it was alleged that 
the club was closed for making propaganda for a terrorist organization due to a book found in the club room uh, as a result of the raid. Um, yeah, first, the book found was not illegal. Uh, thus, um, the possession uh, of it was not an offense. Um, second, uh, according to the uh, club statements, uh, no club mem member was aware of the book in the room. Um, uh, also, uh, we know that uh, there was uh, nobody uh, from uh, LGBTI plus uh, student club uh, during the raids. So um, we don't know how this book, uh, you know, uh, found was found uh, in the uh, students' uh, room. Uh, third, the club, uh, the club room was shared by two different clubs. Uh, uh, so there was no evidence that the book uh, belonged to the members of the LGBTI plus studies club. Um, in addition, uh, Alton claimed that the protests uh, that uh, lasted throughout the day um, was organized uh, in response to the decision to close the club. However, uh, according to the statement made by the LGBTI plus studies club, uh, the decision uh, for the closure of the club uh, was learned by uh, Alton's statement um, after the protests. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, all this process uh, is a good example um, how it is useful for the government uh, to uh, present LGBTI plus people as a, a national security uh, chats uh, because um, they they use it as an excuse to uh, raise their control uh, over uh, public sphere. Uh, yeah, if we consider that you know universities, university campuses are uh, public spaces, um, and they uh, justified uh, that the police. Um, entered uh, to the campus uh, by uh, saying that uh, LGBTI plus club uh, was making uh, propaganda of a terrorist organization. Um, and thirdly, um, and the, they, they um, produce uh, political uh, discourses based on uh, Sunni uh, Turkish identity. Uh, and they also um, use uh, anti-LGBTI plus uh, policies and uh, discourses to establish uh, Sunni Turkish identity over and over again. Uh, for example, um, Erdogan uh, ma made a, uh, statements uh, during the protests um, he said that um, we will carry our youth forward not as LGBT youth, but as the youth in that glorious history of this nation that comes from history. And it, it is a um, very clear uh, example uh, that, you know, that, and they claim that uh, Turkish people uh, are not... <laughs> LGBTI plus, uh, they establish a Sunni, Sunni Turkish identity uh, by uh, producing, producing uh, LGBTI plus host, uh, hostile uh, discourses. Mm. Do I have still time? It would be good if we, if you uh, uh, say a few words to conclude and then uh, we move uh, to Zainab, and then uh, there will be still time during the discussion. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, in short, uh, I, I wanted to uh, point out that um, uh, yeah, what LGBTI plus people uh, experienced uh, during the protest uh, was not new uh, for us. Um, because uh, the government uh, targeted uh, all different segments of society for a while. Um, and uh, also LGBTI plus hostility uh, is very useful for them. Um, uh, so it, it, uh, the, and during what LGBTI plus people uh, 
experience uh, during this protest uh, was um, uh, a part of uh, this uh, hostile policies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oljan. And uh, I want to go back now to uh, Zeynep intervention last time. Uh, she was uh, uh, introducing uh, the mm, discussions about the type of regime uh, that uh, you are facing. Oljan talked about uh, uh, repression, hard repression, uh, uh, but also the development of a sort of uh, solidarity. Uh, and uh, one of uh, the, the specific issues uh, in uh, social movement research is also uh, how and when uh, uh, repressions produces uh, uh, resistance rather than fear. And I think this is uh, also a central issue that uh, you started to address also when uh, uh, Mert uh, talked about the use of uh, humor against fear, uh, which has been uh, a, a sort of... Um, in innovations or development in social movements also in the past. And uh, with your uh, experiences as a scholars and as the participants of previous moments of repression in Turkey, I'm uh, uh, turning to you also to uh, understand uh, which are the, the margins for resistance and uh, uh, what are the hopes in the future. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, Donatella. Uh, and I would also like to thank the, the organizers for insisting that we uh, sort of do a part two to this event, which was uh, hacked by, uh, by uh, Bolsonaro's trolls uh, last time, which shows actually uh, the impact of these events. Uh, if they are disturbing uh, Bolsonaroist, I wouldn't be... Uh, uh, I would be hopeful that these do have an impact. So let me briefly um, uh, sort of sum up also uh, what I said last time. Uh, Matt uh, did a wonderful uh, uh, analysis uh, of the, 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 the regime. And I would just like to add that um, uh, this, this regime is constantly meddling with uh, institutional autonomy by promulgating new laws. So let's be clear on this. This is uh, a regime that uh, also finds the laws that legitimize it uh, or justifies, actually, its hollowing out of institutions and it's establishing a form of uh, Gleichschaltung. Uh, I use the German um, Nazi term um, to, to express this. Uh, which is a sort of bringing into line of all instances of society. And this has um, been especially uh, pronounced since the 2016 failed coup. Uh, so for a couple of years, uh, we um, were actually living under emergency rule, which allowed the government to um, evacuate universities, evacuate um, um, civil society uh, uh, you know, um, organizations to expel academics, to expel um, functionaries, state functionaries, hundreds of thousands of, of judges, clerks, military personnel, etc. So we had a massive, uh, massive liquidation um, of uh, the personnel um, in the, the administrative uh, levels of the state. And of course, a heightened criminalization of all opposition activity. And usually this terrorist law that old John cited um, is used to criminalize um, intellectual activity, mainly that um, a, a dissident intellectual activity is equal to propaganda for a terrorist organization. Um, and that was how the um, so-called academics for peace were criminalized uh, in um, 2000, from 2016 onwards. Um, 1,128 academics were um, sort of charged with propaganda for a terrorist organization for having signed a peace petition. 
um, calling for the government to stop um, its use of heavy uh, weapons in provinces uh, with heavy, um, uh, large Kurdish populations in southeastern Turkey. Um, and I um, also want to say that um, the, 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 this Gleichschaltung uh, is at the same time a process of de-democratization. That was what I had said um, last time. And I, um, I still believe the Boasti resistance is important because it is an instance of re-democratization. Uh, and I would like to um, move to perhaps... Uh, first, at a, 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 a micro level, look at the protests and how it affects us and how it affects the university uh, from the perspective of faculty. Uh, I think last time I had stopped saying, uh, I had um, you know, ended my, my, um, my speech by saying that we academics uh, are learning to speak a language we are unfamiliar with. Uh, the university is an ivory tower. I mean, let us let us uh, accept and admit that. Students are much more politicized than academics usually. Um, and the first massive organization, massive social movement by academics um, in Turkey started with the, the peace petition, the Academics for Peace. It was very, very uh, rare that academics sign such a petition uh, that was fully political um, in content. Now, Boazic is perhaps the second time when, um, since 1980, the university is being politicized so much. Let me look at the, the faculty side, uh, because I think this is interesting and it might um, actually produce a question that for discussion uh, uh, at the end in the Q&A section. So as you know uh, from the pictures we presented last time, our main repertoire at the university consists of our bodily presence in the main square on, on the campus, uh, dressed in full academic attire uh, with our backs turned to the rectorate. Now, it is a form of holding our place, right? Marking the university as our own. Uh, we stand silently for, um, about half an hour um, every day at noon and read out a press release on Fridays. Now, uh, this might indeed be considered as the reiteration of the figure of the standing man at Occupy Gezi protests. I don't know if you remember uh, that figure, uh, but when the police took over the Gezi park and all seemed lost, um, a lonely man stood for eight hours in Taksim Square without moving or speaking. Um, and then others joined him that day and that meme of standing silently quickly spread to other parts of the country. Um, at Boazici, I, I can confidently say that the image of professors in robes standing on the lawn uh, proved to be more powerful, much more powerful than the statements we made or by, uh, uh, than the press releases we read. Um, the images made and still make a huge impression on the media, uh, on the public, uh, on the students, and also on us. Uh, because standing silently in the company of other colleagues in academic attire gives us every day a renewed sense of the solemnity and the significance of the struggle. Uh, by standing there every day at noon, uh, we are actually performing our tenacity. Uh, the refusal to accept the appointed rector uh, is at the same time an act of civil disobedience and a show of force. Um, uh, I mean, I can say that our daily vigils uh, perform a transgression. Uh, since uh, it is legal for the president to appoint rectors. So our vigils are actually defy the law uh, in order to underline its illegitimacy. Uh, I think this, this distinction is important. Uh, uh, the protests mark the limits of authoritarianism and arbitrary power. 
And part of our media appearances as professors uh, uh, asked to speak on the media uh, involved distinguishing between legality and legitimacy, in fact, um, and bringing this up uh, for discussion and debate in Turkey in general. Uh, so, of course, as Matt also very uh, comprehensively uh, summarized, um, the vigils are not the uh, only acts of defiance that uh, characterize the Boasti protests. Um, as I said in the, the first round table, um, your faculty members also per perform uh, the very democratic governance structures uh, that the new rector threatens to undermine. Um, that is to say, the resistance is organized in a horizontal manner. Uh, two days after the appointment in January, um, you know, full-time full faculty, part-time faculty, even retired, retired faculty members uh, uh, sort of lost no time in creating their own committees to enable an efficient division of labor, uh, their own communication channels to bypass the official uh, email network at the university, and, and gathered together in uh, weekly forums via uh, Zoom to take uh, decisions. Uh, now, uh, the background of uh, uh, these protests um, actually it may um, go uh, before 19, the 1980 coup, when there was a massive nine-month boycott of the Middle East Technical University in Ankara, another very prestigious uh, institution, when uh, a rector who was a, uh, a known right-wing, ultra-right-wing uh, partisan was appointed to that university in 1977. Um, uh, at that time, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the constitutional uh, regime actually did allow for protests, and there were very many student uh, mobilizations, but uh, 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 a very strong polarization between the right and the left, as in, as in many countries, right, as in Italy. I mean, the, the, the late 1970s was when um, the left was uh, sort of organizing the unions and sort of re- um, uh, renewing its uh, attack on uh, advanced capitalist uh, systems. Um, during that uh, um, appointment of, in 1977, uh, police entered uh, the campus, uh, the professors decided to boycott uh, courses, the students were mobilized the whole time, and actually the protests ended up in um, sort of uh, forcing the rector to resign, but at the price of a life. I mean, a student was uh, killed, stabbed by um, ultra-right uh, uh, militants. Now, at Boazici, when we first uh, started the, the struggle, many of my colleagues started to, to sort of fear that this might turn into uh, the same uh, sort of... Um, scenario uh, acted out in uh, 1977 uh, and they were sort of fearful of the student uh, students sort of turning this into a full-fledged boycott which actually didn't happen um, so I think uh, I think the the you know 2000s uh, the, the new millennium, uh, is different in that that polarization between the left and the right has disappeared. And we are living in a post-ideological age, let's admit it. Uh, and so the the types of, of, of repertoires and, and um, sort of resources available to uh, protesters uh, in the in previous um, periods is not available to us, nor are they desirable. Uh, what uh, we are doing is defending an institution. I think the specificity of the Boazici protests is that it starts out from an institution, and this institution is a university. Uh, so whether a social movement may arise from the defense of an institution, uh, in my mind, remains undetermined at the present, and I would like very much to... Um, 
open this up to discussion. Uh, resistance within an institution involves a lot of bureaucratic maneuvering, uh, which is partially invisible. I mean, you can't publicize all of the, the tug of war going on within an institution. Uh, but we must also keep in mind that a university is a hierarchical institution by definition. Uh, there is a hierarchy between the educators and the educated. And there is also a generational gap between the professors and the students. That's the definition of a university, uh, you know. Um, so, uh, yes, you and as well as other foreign colleagues uh, often want to know whether the Boazici protests resemble the uh, Occupy Gezi movement. I'd be somewhat wary of directly comparing the two. Um, Gezi brought together social groups and identities that were previously non-affiliated with each other, uh, and it eradicated hierarchies by equalizing the conditions under which the struggle uh, was uh, taking place, was waged. Uh, and most importantly, um, the total absence of institutional structures at Gezi uh, liberated the collective imaginary it um, therefore became possible to prefigure an alternative society, to prefigure an alternative world, to, to, to prefigure an alternative form of relating. Now, in my view, and Merit and old John might want to contest this, uh, the Boazici protests uh, do not produce an alternative. They call upon the ideal. Uh, we are not yet at a point where an alternative to the university system can be imagined or a, a different form of relating to students can be enacted. Uh, the Boazci pro protests present a challenge to the authoritarian political regime in Turkey uh, because we reclaim the liberties and institutional guarantees for autonomy uh, that have been confiscated by the government. Um, the, so it is a it is a defensive uh, sort of movement, uh, but our protests don't exactly prefigure alternative ways of being or teaching. Uh, now, ironically, uh, although the protests themselves politicize Boazici, faculty members claim that they they are protesting to keep politics out of Boazici. Uh, but actually, what is being constituted is a new political body that is not an academic body. We are starting to relate to each other uh, in new ways as academics, although this, uh, the awareness of this uh, has not yet uh, been um, fully you know, uh, shared. Um, this having been said, um, I think if Boazici proves to be a laboratory for the rest of Turkey, uh, then our protests might, might move beyond the campus in interesting and unforeseen ways. Uh, what is being done to Boazici in a, uh, on a miniature scale uh, by the government has already been done to all of the institutions in the country. Right? This, you know, uh, the legal but illegitimate hollowing out of institutions, attacked by a media that has been totally monopolized by the government, attacks by social media trolls, criminalization, um, the police presence, etc. Uh, and I would like to just uh, uh, remind you, give, me an, give you an information that uh, this week on Wednesday, uh, the students who are actually imprisoned uh, because of the Boazci protests, will appear before the court. And so uh, the, the, the courthouse will become uh, another site for the Boazci, the continuation of the Boazci protests. But let me just sum up um, by saying that if Boazci doesn't give in, uh, it might inspire others to form cracks in the wall of authoritarianism. Um, uh, 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 and that is why these noon vigils are important. 
because they perform and express our will and our tenacity. Um, I am quite hopeful. I believe in the optimism of the will. Uh, and I think this protests, uh, these protests will evolve into something bigger than themselves. Uh, so I would like to conclude by um, asking you to continue supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. For sure, <laughs> we will. And uh, I think that there are many ve very interesting points to uh, address in uh, all the presentation now about uh, uh, Zeynep. Uh, uh, I was uh, struck by the uh, analysis of the bodily presence. You have worked with Judith Butler and uh, uh, it resonates with her uh, analysis very much. But also the way in which you presented uh, also the potentials of the events made me thinking of a way you have yourself also analyzed Kizi as belonging to a politics of becoming, uh, of uh, uh, subjectivities that uh, were not there. To a certain extent, of course, there is a difference between a park and the university, but there is a social construction that uh, could be similar uh, of something like Mertz was saying before, like a public good, which uh, also uh, others uh, identify. And I think that from all uh, your presentations, uh, what emerged was also this um, transformative capacity of the craft. So the horizontality of the organizations, the participations of the different uh, bodies, uh, the denied but still existing politicization, uh, the debates uh, on what does it mean uh, uh, a, a good university and how uh, merit is not something neutral. I think all of uh, uh, this made your struggle important uh, uh, n not only for us to support, but also for us to participate in, because uh, uh, all these uh, uh, issues are uh, so relevant uh, also uh, beyond your country. Uh, I, Lorenzo told me that uh, uh, we don't have uh, uh, questions from uh, the uh, other uh, audience uh, uh, not visible here from the YouTube, uh, but uh, I wonder if uh, the organizers have some comments. Delal, please give the floor. Hello. Uh. <laughs> You know, uh, thank you all uh, once again for participating us uh, and accepting our invitation for this roundtable discussion. And we are all admirers uh, of your courage uh, and persistence. Uh, and you are really a, another source of hope for Turkey. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I have one uh, general question. Any of you might uh, reply. Uh, it is about, I mean, Zeynep told that it is not like prefigurative, but we observe uh, a lot of uh, solidarity between different groups, like between the professors and the students, but also between uh, different students from different sections of society. Uh, like, uh, with, uh, so I am, I would like to hear more about this. Like, is it somehow, is it this experience of solidarity uh, is, is it a kind of hope for a new institution? Maybe not yet, but maybe some, uh, some you know, uh, early seeds of new things. And another, I have more comment to Olga, actually. I am a big fan of Olga from social media. <laughs> uh, and I really admire the way that how he... At one moment, he talks about how he escaped from the police. Another moment, he may talk about his 
what kind of erot erotic photos he likes. You know, I really admire this integrity of experience of political life and sexual life, which is new to me, like sharing on public. And I am really, um, it is very inspiring in terms of imagining another way of doing politics. And it also reminds me in another context, Zeynep told about the power of vulnerability. I, I mean, this making yourself open uh, this way, is it, is it a new kind of political uh, way of being? Uh, what would you like to talk about it? It is and it's something new, as I understand. Very inspiring, but I would like to hear more about it. Thank you. Thank you, Delal. Before giving the floor back, Batuan. Batuan and then Rosa. Okay, can you hear me? Perfect, perfect. First, to thank you for all of you for a perfect discussion. Uh, thank you so much for that. And first, I have a comment, then I have a question. And my comment is that, well, I'm coming from a middle class family, so actually, you know, in Turkey, you are not really able to spend that much money on education. And just like most of my friends, Bosch University was kind of a symbol that demonstrates that if you work hard enough, then we can be get accepted to a very prestigious institution. You know, it was a symbol of kind of meritocracy for, I think, a broad uh, segment in Turkish society. And I think this is not only for the secular middle class families, but uh, it was kind of same for different sectors and different social groups in Turkey. So it was a, a symbolic institution. And then you see that a person who did not do anything to be there, just appointed as a rector for such a prestigious constitution, is both ironic and tragic at the same time. And I think that this is one of the reasons why these protests resonated with a broader population. This was just my comment on how and why uh, we observe such a popularity of these protests in Turkey. And my question is that you already know that the last year actually was marked with the woman movement in the streets of Turkey. So do you think that the renewed image of streets movements through this woman movement in Turkey and its uh, popular legitimacy uh, enable the Boğaziçi protest to reach a broader population in Turkey? Thank you. Thank you, Batuan. Uh, Rosa? Yes, uh, thank you also from my side uh, to all the speakers. It was really um, inspiring, um, the least to say. Um, my question is quite related to what Delal and Batuhan already, you know, um, directed at you. But I was also thinking of still learned lessons, but not necessarily going back all the way to Gezi, Occupy Gezi, but to the period after the state of emergency was declared after the fate coup attempt of 2016 and 17, when the first dismissals of, you know, academics started to happen. And I wonder if um, after this period of some sort of silence, let's say, abeyance of, you know, protests, and then suddenly we have the Bozici protests, um, there, there have been there, there has been a construction of a new political imaginary. Although Zeynep, as you said, um, uh, it's it's about defending an institution, but I do see some sort of you know uh, a creation of a new political imaginary, especially looking at statements that were um, that were published, where there were there was a narration of injustice, not only on, only related to the institution of Bozic University, but from um, Berkin Evan to Selatin Demirtas to, you know, all the inst instances of, um, um, you know, the government trying to crush any sort of social movement, any progressive, um, any progressive development in Turkey. Um, also a clear um, solidarity with, you know, HDP politicians in prison with the Kurdish issue. So I do see some sort of hope that the Bozici protest does create a new political imaginary among, among the people and among us um, observing that, that protest. So I was wondering how you see um, the potential of actually all of you of um, forming alliances 
between the different uh, sec sections of uh, society and also how um, the Bozici protest developed maybe or can develop from, you know, from a single issue um, protest into a larger uh, progressive, coherent social movement, you know, kind of following up what you said at the, big, at, uh, at the end of your talk, uh, Zeynep. And also um, in reference to, um, to the first round table before we were um, attacked, when uh, when you said it's it's like a balance between um, de-democratization and redemocratization, I wondered um, it, it's exactly that. Like, what is the role of alliances if we consider the Bozici protest a redemocratization of Turkey um, and as you know a, a sphere of struggle against authoritarianism? Thank you again. Thank you very much. I have a, a, a question which is uh, also, I think, related with Rosa's uh, from the public. Is Denise who asks, how can we think of the LGBTI plus presence within the protest beyond inclusion or its impact on state politics? How does this visibility challenge the everyday heterosexuality of uh, the public sphere? Uh, the public space, uh, including on campus. And um, also related with the other questions that have been asked, uh, uh, I was thinking about uh, the explicit or implicit learning, uh, not only from the success of Gezi, but also from some of its uh, failure. So uh, um, my own question is also to to which extent there is a reflection on uh, what went wrong after Gezi uh, and how to uh, take up the richness uh, uh, but correct the mistakes. So I, I will uh, give the floor back uh, to uh, our guests. Uh, let's start with Mert. Okay, um, thank you for all these uh, questions. They are great questions. I'm not sure if I can do, if I can address all of them and do justice to them while addressing even a uh, few of them. But um, um, I want to say a few things, and I, you know, I'm not going to go. You know, I'll just try to give an answer that will address perhaps multiple uh, questions. So one set of questions kind of you know, raises the, this question of alliances and, and, and ties and linkages to, to, to other, other movements. Here, I think, you know, I, I may be too much of an empiricist, uh, but for now, at least, uh, I don't want to claim that, you know, that we are building or there's this process of building and constructing these, these, this, this larger movement with ties to, to, to multiple uh, subordinate groups that, that, that kind of you know, struggle against the, the, the authoritarian uh, regime. I'm not sure if that is what's uh, going on here. Uh, but more modestly, one thing that we are witnessing here is kind of reinvigoration or the creation of some of the ties to, like ties, for instance, among academics from different universities. This on its own is, I think, a very valuable thing. Uh, basically, groups from different universities are also raising their voices. We are now, you know, building, you know, panels and 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 and, and different organizational milieus to 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 discuss our common common problems in order to 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 develop some sort of a common struggle against. Uh, uh, against the kind of uh, oppression, repression that 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 uh, that that the, that the higher education uh, faces in, in in Turkey, I think this is uh, given the kind of uh, authoritarian context that we are experiencing. This on its own is is an important. Uh, I wouldn't say achievement because I don't think it's achieved yet, but it's something that we are trying to construct here, and the fact that you know now. We have not only Bozic faculty, but other faculty from other universities raise their voice. Was an important um, achievement in this in this post-emergency uh, emergency era. So, so I'll be more honestly modest in in my uh, 
expectations in terms of organizational development, linkages, you know, network building, um, etc. This may also be true for the student and the student movement. Uh, I can't really comment uh, on that, but we may be seeing, I, I think, you know, the, the, the fact that students from very different universities uh, protested and, and tried to spread the protest across the country uh, suggests that there is also reinvigoration of those, uh, of some of those uh, ties. The, uh, you know, one can perhaps make such claims also uh, for uh, LGBTI uh, movement in in the university or the groups in the university and and the, and the larger uh, larger uh, movement. But you know, again, uh, I don't think I know enough to 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 to, to comment on that. As for the the uh, the uh, the question about you know how whether the women's movement and its protests enabled, um, I think you know I think it was really important that uh, these large protests that have been you know sustained by the women's movement uh, has overall been quite important in sustaining uh, the visibility the public visibility of protests and resistance in Turkey over the last uh, decade. So in that sense, I. I don't, you know, in terms of like some sort of moral, emotional, effectable enabling, uh, the very presence, its visibility, uh, its 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 claim to public sphere, uh, and its challenge to, to 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 numerous attempts on the part of the government to ban and stigmatize uh, their protests, has been, you know, has been a source of moral support for for other movements as well. Uh, whether there is some sort of a connection beyond that, I think that that would also be uh, difficult uh, to claim. But I think it's really it was really important that it the, the women's movement was able to 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 to, to claim the public sphere and maintain its visibility. As I said uh, in my presentation, I don't think Boazici protests was the only other protest. Uh, there were other protests by the. the uh, the, the Kurdish movement, the, the uh, again, the, you know, the, the lawyers and you know other groups to to, to claim and uh, assert their public visibility in resisting uh, authoritarian uh, repression. But perhaps you know the the, the the latest protest was one of the one of the largest. And one thing that the Bosnian protest shared, I think, with the women's movement was its ability to to, to appeal across uh, cleavages. And this is again something that we. As for the women's movement, we see this on the surveys. Uh, like I, I, I've done recently a survey among uh, Istanbul residents, and there it's very, you know, it's very visible how the women's movement is able to uh, cross-cut many of the cleavages, partisan cleavages as well. When it when it try when it organizes protests, unlike other groups, many other groups where the you know a part of the public approves crackdown uh, on the protesters. When it comes to the women's movement, that is not really the, the, the case. And I think that was also partially true for the Boazici protests uh, uh, as well. Um, and finally, uh, regarding the, 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 the question of the imaginary and also related to the comment that, that Zeynep made about the prefigurative politics, I totally agree. Like, I don't think... What we try, what we've been doing is prefiguring an alternative. It's more about, uh, as in a point of that, defending uh, an institution. But I think this has also been one of the biggest changes since Gezi. The, 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 the scope of the institutional deterioration that we experienced uh, since Gezi, it started before Gezi. It's also often a, a wrong assessment that it started after the Gezi, the, the institutional deterioration started way before the Gezi, but the way it accelerated and destroyed the existing institutions created a renewed sense of the importance of institutions. I think uh, also among, uh, within the left, interestingly, which often, you know, uh, struggle to transform institutions, but uh, rightfully so. But I think we also have this new sense that, you know, institutions are import important and that we have to preserve some of it to build something new and to expand it and, and improve it. And I think uh, perhaps, you know, the, the, the Boazici protests also build on that kind of learning. The learning, uh, our learning of, you know, how, you know, even those institutions that we didn't approve that much were 
had something significant and that you need to, you know, preserve some of it to build upon it. Uh, and, you know, this may be more of a more reformist imaginary than you would like, but I think, you know, that, that has been, I think there is some sort of that kind of a public awareness. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone shares this, but I, I feel like this has been one of the things that we learned in the past um, couple of years. And last point, um, You know, we may not be building a movement here, and I don't think that is the intention uh, of the protesters anyway, but um, I think what, what, one of the important uh, long-term uh, contributions of this protest, protest could be, you know, are the youth in Turkey now perhaps becoming more vocal and gaining its voice in, in, and using its own terms and, and producing its own content to criticize the, the, the existing regime, but not only the existing regime, but also the existing, obviously, the, uh, the unequal social relations in many aspects of uh, social, in many spheres of uh, social life. So if there is going to be, I think, uh, a long-term uh, product of this, uh, of this uh, protest movement is that, that, that the youth... Uh, this is the Boazici youth, but also along with it, you know, the, the youth from, you know, other universities and, or, I don't know, high schools, etc. You know, they are kind of uh, raising their own voice against the existing state of affairs in, in Turkey. And I think that is, that is quite an achievement if that actually, you know, uh, uh, takes place. So. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, hello again. Um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, I, I can um, answer these questions by uh, referring the similarities and differences between Gezi Park protests and uh, Boğaziçi protests. Um, yeah, in uh, we have seen both uh, in protests at Boğaziçi University and uh, in the Gezi Park protests that. Uh, public spaces are not just areas uh, that citizens visit. Um, public spaces are uh, living spaces. Um, they open up space for us to exercise our citizenship rights, like uh, right to education, uh, or uh, to find each other, to uh, organize, um, and um, to uh, develop ourselves. Uh, to realize ourselves. Uh, so uh, public spaces are important and uh, AKP government uh, attempts to uh, homogenize uh, um, public spaces uh, for a long time. Uh, yeah, in both uh, Gezi protests and uh, Boğaziçi protests, um, I think that that's why diversity uh, was um, much emphasized by protesters because um, their living spaces uh, are taken from their hands. Uh, and in both protests, um, people, um, you know, uh, pitch tents uh, in uh, protest areas like on campus and uh, uh, on Gezi Park uh, because uh, they uh, want to send uh, a message that uh, it is their uh, living spaces. Um, and of course, uh, and I think the, the, the demands of Gezi Park protests are uh, much uh, more uh, decentral decentralized uh, than uh, Boaz protests because in Boaz protests there is a, a institutional defense, as uh, Professor uh, Gambet said. Uh, but um, and although uh, there are differences in terms of political demands uh, between uh, Gezi protests and Boğaziçi protests. I think, um, you know, people who participated in these protests uh, has very similar uh, motivations. Um, yeah, for example, I, um, yeah, all uh, protesters uh, instrumentalizes these protests uh, to. Uh, to uh, voice uh, their uh, objections uh, again uh, to government, uh, and these uh, objections are uh, 
based on uh, the process before uh, was uh, going on. Um, yeah, in Boğaziçi uh, pro uh, protests, uh, yeah, the institutional defense uh, is not the only uh, motivation, uh, in short, uh, uh, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, the existence uh, of uh, LGBTI uh, people in uh, these protests um, constantly uh, reminds uh, people that um, we, we are not uh, homogeneous. Uh, there are differences among us. Um, also, uh, for example, uh, four students uh, were uh, detained uh, because of uh, organizing uh, the exhibition. Uh, and uh, many uh, officials, uh, state officials, uh, claimed that they were LGBTI plus people, but we, we don't know about their uh, sexual identities. And if uh, LGBTI plus people uh, didn't exist uh, in this protest, uh, all of us uh, would uh, be assumed as heterosexuals. Uh, so uh, our existence in there uh, always uh, reminded uh, people uh, that uh, there are differences among us and also uh, challenge uh, heteronormativity in these uh, spaces, I think. Uh, yeah, also, uh, we have uh, differences uh, and, and among protesters. Uh, there are uh, differences um, political being. Uh, uh, and demands. Uh, for example, uh, on Twitter, thousands of people posted their nude photos uh, by writing Resist Boğaziçi. Uh, and this hashtag uh, has become a trend topic uh, on Twitter. Uh, yeah, many protesters uh, who participate in Boğaziçi protest um, was not um, happy with this uh, kind of uh, protest because they said that uh, the people instrumentalized uh, our uh, struggle uh, to, uh, you know, um, collect likes uh, or um, yeah, yeah, and posting uh, nude photos have nothing with uh, academic freedom or institutional defense. Uh, many protesters was uh, unhappy uh, because of this. Uh, kind of uh, resistance, but uh, for example, it it was um, it made me very happy because um, one of uh, the demands of mine uh, is um, sexual freedom uh, on a public space. Uh, to uh, yeah, my demand is uh, to exist in public spaces, including a university, uh, by uh, being visible uh, with, with my sexual identity. Uh, so uh, this kind of protest, I mean, uh, posting uh, nude photos, um, uh, seemed to me like a demand for uh, sexual freedom uh, on a public sphere. Uh, because uh, not only LGBTI plus people uh, suffers uh, from uh, sexual repression, uh, Etc. Uh, other people also uh, suffers uh, from it, and um, with, with this uh, kind of uh, resistance, um, I uh, felt, um, you know, uh, I felt like I I am belong to these uh, protests. Uh, so, um, yeah, in short, uh, I think yeah, institutional defense is important, but uh, there are many different uh, political beings and. Uh, repertoires, demands uh, among uh, protesters. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, very much. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, we have received another question that uh, uh, I, uh, I, I will ask Zeneb to address as well, and it is about solidarities by other universities. Uh, and the question is uh, why uh, uh, there was a silence uh, from other universities, especially METU, uh, and uh, did they really uh, raise their voice? Uh, or are your expectations? Uh, 
Please, Zainab. Yes, so thank you for the questions. These are very complicated questions. So I'll try to also answer the first set of questions in a more synthetic way. Um, I think uh, it's important to sort of distinguish between um, a politics of place or space uh, and street movements. Uh, so being an institution, defense of an institution, the Boazci protests are uh, sort of a typical uh, example uh, of a politics of, of space and place. Um, and therefore, it's a defense of this place. It's a holding on to that space. It's a reappropriation of a space, actually, uh, which is an institutional uh, space. Whereas street movements, uh, for instance, uh, Gezi can be considered a, a street movement, but also the women's movements and also the LGBTI struggles can be considered, uh, you know, um, street movements uh, because of the lack of a specific place. Um, they uh, sort of uh, uh, tend to have a, a different um, a repertoire and different um, impact. Uh, in, um, just to remember that uh, Twitter usage uh, sort of skyrocketed in Turkey with Gezi. Uh, and um, I remember this slogan uh, sort of reappropriating uh, one of the slogans of uh, 1968 uh, during Gezi. Uh, uh, which was, which went like this, the struggle will be tweeted live. Um, and that was when, you know, uh, uh, tweet traffic sort of skyrocketed from nearly nothing to uh, everybody um, being on Twitter. Uh, that sort of uh, movement creates its public uh, space uh, in, uh, through social media um, and also through real encounters, real physical encounters between different uh, sort of social groups because it takes place um, in uh, public spaces that are much more open than an institution is. Uh, and we mustn't forget also that um, Gezi was the time when, um, after Gezi actually, the post-Gezi period was the time when the AKP government understood the importance of the social media and created its army of trolls. So AKP trolls uh, were a product of uh, the post-Gezi period. Uh, now, uh, and therefore, does the Boazici protests connect with the street movements? I don't think so. In, in direct ways, no. Um, in indirect ways, yes, because it does uh, sort of um, address a new form of political uh, imaginary, as I, I think it was Rosa who uh, asked the question, uh, a new kind of political imaginary that is much more creative, uses, um, you know, images, artistic uh, sort of uh, performances to um, convey its message. Uh, as it, uh, and its message uh, is usually a post-ideological message of uh, wanting to uh, exist in society, and that was the LGBT slogan, right? Oshan um, sort of underlined it well. Um, since Gezi, the LGBT community, are um, using the, the phrase, LGBTs exist, trans <coughs> individuals exist, um, as a, a, a form of uh, sort of opening up a, a space for a livable life. Uh, within a society that is conservative and has been polarized uh, against uh, uh, LGBT and also uh, certain women's rights. Uh, but I would say that uh, the students, the younger generation, is much more responsive to this new political imaginary. So what I was trying to portray in my, in my talk is that faculty because of their institutional role, because of their, uh, 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 you know, attributed status of um, people holding an authority and, uh, you know, possessing an authority and of knowledge producers in society, uh, tend to shy away from that new imaginary 
and I think uh, the the students are much better than the faculty in creating those uh, ties that include other social groups. Um, for instance, citing uh, Osman Kavala, citing um, who, an intellectual who has been imprisoned for absurd charges uh, for um, three years now, uh, or by citing the Kurdish movement. Um, or what we are doing now, actually, is also a form of uh, moving out of that institutional framework and creating uh, new solidarities, right? Uh, I think the, the, the transformative power of the protests on the faculty members themselves uh, uh, sort of springs from uh, what uh, Delal uh, uh, sort of rightly called uh, the power of vulnerability. Actually, vulnerability is not opposed to resistance. That was, you know, um, part of the work that I've been doing. Vulnerability is uh, one of the reasons why resistance uh, uh, sort of um, emerges. At this, in our particular case, it was academic vulnerability, institutional vulnerability. But as the, the protests unfolded, we are also discovering how, what makes a university work? It's very surprising to, to sort of realize that none of us really knew how, what the Senate would do and what the executive board uh, would do and what kind of problems we would be encountering if we refuse, for instance, an appointed rector, an appointed uh, a dean, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and so, there is a growing sense of um, vulnerability of professors to certain bureaucratic maneuvers within the institution, and also uh, the sense of how students are uh, uh, vulnerabilized in this context, owing to the the threat of you know um, the threat of the the. Uh, uh, not not being uh, able to obtain their diplomas or uh, undergoing disciplinary measures uh, because of the administration. This growing vulnerability is developing a different kind of relationship between uh, professors uh, and students, as well as professors with the whole administrative structure of the university. And I think this is very valuable. Um, the solidarity messages we are receiving are growing day by day. And METU, the Middle East Technical University, did actually issue a solidarity statement. It is difficult in other universities to get together uh, and sort of come out with one's own name uh, and issue a public statement because, as I was saying, Boazci was the last fortress. All other universities in Turkey are now under um, under the, the the control of pro-government uh, rectors or pro-government uh, deans, and therefore professors are being subjected to uh, administrative investigations if they uh, manifest dissent. Uh, but. Uh, in terms of in terms of uh, the creation of new uh, you know a, a new imaginary for the university, um, the peace petitioners were uh, uh, is an example I would like to cite. Like I said, a uh, thousand one hundred twenty eight academics signed uh, a peace petition, and a, a large number of them have been expelled from their universities and have been banned from practicing their profession within the public uh, university system. So what do professors do when they are expelled? Well, they try to create alternative uh, sort of um, you know, collective uh, platforms through which to uh, disseminate their knowledge, meet with students, meet with other faculty, uh, either in Turkey or in exile. That movement created, for instance, new uh, institutional structures in um, Germany and in um, the U.S. Uh, called uh, Universities in Exile. So it got together other colleagues to, to form and uh, to devise ways to 
uh, first of all, provide some, some income to these academics uh, and also to um, sort of get them to continue teaching, continue researching, although they are not affiliated with the university. I think that was a, a, a very prefigurative um, and still is a sort of innovation. Um, um, and, and thinking of the university as a support system is something new to us. We always thought of the university as a system where you advance and you do your career and teach, etc. Actually, it is a support system. It is not just a material support system. Without a university, a professor um, loses uh, 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 its, their space of existence, right? Uh, and therefore, this, re this renewed... Uh, attachment uh, to the university and to the institution has emerged from this moment. And last but not least, um, I think uh, one of the, the ways in which uh, these um, protests can um, increase is perhaps learn from the Greek uh, uh, slogan, uh, bread, education, freedom. Uh, that was the Greek slogan um, before, uh, uh, you know, um, 1980 when uh, the student movement was very lively and we had uh, encounters with uh, Greek colleagues uh, very recently and we were reminded of the ways in which the struggle for academic freedom can be linked to the struggle for bread, for a dignified uh, uh, livelihood uh, a dignified mode of life and to um, freedom. So we are learning, as Donatella was saying and Ma uh, Mart was also saying, we, this is the constitution of a new we, uh, but it has its mishaps uh, and perhaps uh, its own strengths because of that. So I hope that was uh, satisfactory as an answer. Thank you, Zeynep, and uh, thank you very much to the three of you. Uh, we are to a certain extent grateful also to the trolls that allowed us to double this event because uh, uh, I think that uh, all these uh, three hours and something together uh, have made uh, a lot to illuminate us about uh, a, a very important uh, moment the spirit of uh, uh, Bogaziki is uh, uh, important, even if uh, different from uh, the one of Gezi. Uh, and uh, we want to thank you so much for having uh, illuminating us, but also for your courage and for your optimism. And we hope that uh, also within uh, the uh, various initiatives that have been mentioned, uh, university in exercise and so on, we can uh, collaborate uh, and uh, uh, continue to debate on issues of um, bread, education and freedom. And we especially hope to be able to host you soon uh, in uh, Florence in presence and to continue this discussion. So uh, uh, thank you, Zeynep. Uh, Ojan Mert, thank you, Batuan, uh, Rosa and Delal, and uh, uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much again. So thank much. you so much. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.